What is up? Welcome back everybody. We're going to be making an epoxy and wood table today. Before I get into this, I had made an intro part of my last video where I said thank you very much for 100 subs and I also had a video go over 10,000 views. My last video only had like 30 views, so I don't think too many people saw that. So I just wanted to take this opportunity again to say thank you so much for all the support. Very happy to go over 100 subs and to have at least one video doing pretty well on the channel. So in the bonus room of our house, we have a sectional couch. There are no end tables by this couch right now, so there's nowhere to really set drinks or anything like that when you're watching TV. So I finally decided to make a table for that. I was originally gonna do kind of the classic live edge river looking epoxy deal where you cut some wood in half and flip it over and put some epoxy in there. But I am very much a more a fan of of more geometric patterns. So that being said, rather than just do kind of the, the classic river thing, I decided to make this into kind of a stripe pattern where you'll see in the end, but um, I'm going to kind of stagger these or alternate the top of this table between some walnut and some colored epoxy. Um, I tried to color the epoxy similar to the color of the couch just to keep it a little bit consistent. Um, but getting into this, the first thing I did was draw it all out and put it on my handy dandy whiteboard so I'd always have something to reference throughout the project. I'm starting off by making the mold for the top of the table. I did make a mold for the support leg of this table, but I did not show the building of that mold as it is basically the exact same as this, only with different dimensions. I think many people use melamine for this, which is completely fine. I've always just used uh, regular three quarter inch plywood, and then I use packing tape to cover it all to prevent the epoxy from sticking. Once I had all the basic pieces of the mold cut, I took them over to the Craig jig and put pocket holes in to attach the sides of the mold to the base piece. I wanted at least a relatively smooth surface, so when I put the packing tape on, it would have a tendency to stick a little bit better. So I sanded everything down with just some 80 grit. So before putting packing tape on the base piece of the mold, I got a combo square and a pen, and I marked out where the interior dimensions of the mold would be. These are should be very close to the final dimensions of your tabletop. Um, you can lose a little bit once you are sanding and jointing any edges of the final tabletop when it comes out of the mold. Um, but I marked this to be 11 by 13, which was going to be the final dimensions of my tabletop. After that, I covered any face on all of the pieces of this mold that was going to be possibly touching any of the epoxy. And this is just regular old clear packing tape. Okay, next it was time to attach the side pieces of the mold to the base piece. I clamped these down pretty hard because sometimes when you're screwing in pocket hole screws, it can shift the piece forward a little bit. And I really wanted to dial this in onto the lines that I've drawn. So you'll see me moving clamps around here and there and sometimes isolating screws um, because I wanted to do this one at a time and make sure that these pieces were really um, lined up with the line I had drawn pretty well. In addition to the pocket hole screws screwing the side pieces down onto the base, I also screwed some screws in from the side of each side piece into its adjacent side piece to really pull the seams together of those side pieces so that I would have a good space to caulk and to prevent any epoxy from getting through the vertical seams. So here I'm just using some caulk plus silicone and I'm just going to use my finger and smush it down into all the seams on the interior part of the mold. Again, this is to prevent any epoxy from seeping through and getting out of the mold while it's drying. So after cutting a couple pieces of walnut down to length, I took them over to the jointer. I jointed one edge of each, and then I took them over the planer and planed them down to the thickness I want. You can make this whatever you want. I think mine was right around seven eighths of an inch. I set my table saw to three quarters of an inch, and I ran both walnut pieces through because I needed seven pieces of walnut, three quarters of an inch thick. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I took all seven pieces over to the miter saw. I set a stop block in place so I could quickly cut these into seven pieces, 13 inches in length. I took a tape measure and I put it along the shorter length side of the tabletop mold and I marked a line every three quarters of an inch so that I would have a good reference point to put each one of these walnut pieces down inside there to try to get them in place evenly. And after that I took a combo square and I put it so that I could mark the line down inside the side pieces uh, so it was a little bit easier to reference once I got the walnuts sat down inset into the mold. Next I just laid my seven pieces out, kind of looked at each side and tried to put them with the side up that I kind of thought looked the best uh, with grain patterns, etc. I sanded down all the pieces real quick with some 120 grit sandpaper and then I just laid them into the mold using the reference marks that I had made. I got a piece of one by board that I was going to use. Obviously that one by is three quarters of an inch. So I used it as a three quarter inch spacer in between all the pieces. It didn't come out exact. So I had to, had to eyeball one of the last, kind of the last two pieces, but uh, the difference was negligible. I wanted to get a pretty tight fit along the long axis of the table. So I took a couple clamps and I clamped the mold from the outsides just to kind of pinch the walnut in place real tight. And that was just to try to prevent some of the epoxy from seeping along the outside. So it was time to start mixing epoxy for my first pour. This is some deep pour epoxy that allows you to pour um, up to two inches at a time. I didn't need that obviously for the tabletop, but it did come into play when I built the support leg. Regardless, um, again, please be meticulous with your measurements when you are measuring this out. Follow the instructions that come with the epoxy to a T. Do the best you can to be consistent with your dye so you get equal coloring throughout. And um, that's about all I can say on that. If you follow the instructions to a T, it'll come out pretty well. In this case, the epoxy called to be um, mixed for five minutes. Um, with some stopping in between to scrape sides and bottom. So I set a timer. Um, I used my drill here to mix it for two and a half minutes. And then I got a stir stick and kind of wiped the sides in the bottom, stirred it for another two and a half minutes. Then I added a little bit of dye and stirred it for another additional two minutes before I made the pour. After you make your pour, just bust out your handy dandy heat gun and hit it to get rid of the bubbles. This doesn't take but just a few seconds. They come out super quickly. I also took a stir stick once I uh, heat gunned the bubbles out. Um, and if you just kind of run it back and forth across, you'll get a little bit of that wavy look and that's kind of what I was going for. Next, it was time to move on to building the support leg of this table. I set my stop block for 23 and a half inches. I got a piece of walnut out, cut it to length joint it and planed it. I needed this to be uh, four inches by about two and a quarter. That two and a quarter is really just three quarters of an inch times three. And the way I built this support leg, you could probably see in the picture, um, was to have a piece of walnut and then a stripe of epoxy and then another piece of walnut. Those were each gonna be three quarters of an inch to match up with the three quarters of an inch um, stripes on the top of the tabletop. So three quarters of an inch times three, two and a quarter. And then again, they were gonna be four inches. So dimensions again of the support leg, four inches by two and a quarter inches. See, at this point, I've already built the mold for this support leg. I didn't want to show that. I went through the exact same process as I built the other mold. Um, so you can always reference that if you need to. Uh, I took these two pieces, I put them down inside there. The epoxy pour was going to be in between the two pieces. So I wanted to get these walnut pieces as flush against the side of the mold as possible. Um, you'll see I grabbed a couple clamps because I noticed one of these pieces was kind of pulling away from the edge of the mold a little bit. So I just clamped it up against it to make the pour. Always a good idea to make sure that your mold is on a level surface before you make an epoxy pour.
Since the maximum pour depth for this epoxy was two inches and I had a four inch support leg, I had to do this in two pours. Um, this epoxy called for 48 hours before making a second pour. So I did my first one, I waited two days, mixed up some more and made the second pour. It's a good idea to cover these when you're done pouring, just so no dust or anything like that gets down into it. Once it's good and dry and hard to the touch, take your clamps off, unscrew your mold, take it apart, get a hammer if you have to, and beat the sides off, and get your workpiece out. Next I took both pieces over to the planer and I planed them down to the thickness I wanted. In keeping with the more squared off look that this whole table is going to have, I decided to put a chamfer on all these edges rather than a round over and I think it ended up looking pretty good. Okay, so for sanding these down, I used 120, 220, and then 320 grit sandpaper. You'll see in between a couple of these sandings, I got a rag with a tiny bit of water on it, and I wiped it down with water, and that was just to raise the wood grain up a little bit and try to get it a little bit smoother for the next sanding. So to finish these up, I use wipe on poly. I put on one coat and then I sand it with 600. I put on another coat, I sand it with 2000. And then I put on three more coats, I sand it with 2000 between each of the last three coats. And that was for all work pieces. <laughs> The last thing I needed to do was make a base for this table. I took some raw walnut out, I cut it to the dimensions I wanted, uh, jointed it, I planed it down, and then I glued it up together. Uh, I got it to the dimensions I wanted, which were slightly bigger than the dimensions of the tabletop. I was a little bit concerned about um, weight and, you know, if we put a drink or any kind of weight on top of this table, the support leg for this was going to be on the side rather than in the center part of the table, as I'm sure you saw in the picture. Um, so I didn't know if it was going to have a tendency to kind of tip over or anything like that. My support leg was four inches, so I didn't think that was going to happen. But just in case, I wanted to make the base of the table a little bit bigger dimensions um, than the top of the table. For this part of the table, I again sanded it down with 80 and then 120 and then 220. As the base of the table was a little bit thicker than the top of the table, I decided to add a little bit of a bigger chamfer onto the top of this base. I only put three coats of poly on the base of the table. I put one coat on, sanded with 600, one more coat, sanded with 2000, and then put the last coat on.
We've got a tape measure and a combo square out. I measured the center line on the side of this base where the support leg was going to be attached. I marked the center line and then I marked out from the center line the width of the support leg. Now, I didn't mark all the way out to the edge of where the support leg was gonna sit because I didn't want a visible pencil line there. So I marked it just short, but I really wanted to just get a good general gauge of where it was gonna sit. I also marked one line out three quarters of an inch from the center on each side. And that was so I would know where the wood parts of the support leg would be sitting. Then I drilled the hole straight through so that I could put screws in from the other side. I got it about where I wanted it as best as I could. Then I got a clamp and I clamped it together so that I could screw it together from the bottom. I first just screwed one screw in and then I flipped it over and I did some double checks on the measurement to make sure that it was going to be perpendicular to the size of the base. Then I screwed the other screws in. I put some shop towels on top of the tabletop to prevent any uh, clamp marks when I went to clamp this on. Now, I struggled with how to attach this tabletop um, to the support leg. I thought about drilling some holes in and countersinking them um, and then covering that up with some more epoxy. I thought about doing some pocket holes from underneath and uh, working with those and trying to, um, you know, wood fill that, seal that back up and polyurethane that. But in the end, I just got out some CA glue. I put it on top of the support leg. I smushed the tabletop on there and I clamped it down and it turned out pretty good. I did one last sanding of the very top with 2000 and put one last coat of poly on this thing and called it finished. Okay, so here it is. I took a couple of glamour shots of this thing, put it upstairs in the room it was gonna be in. Here it is in some daylight. I got a couple other shots of it next to the arm of the couch where it's probably going to be sitting forever. But I just wanna say thanks again for watching my content. I hope you like this table. Um, I always appreciate all of the views, all of the likes, all the comments. Let me know down in the comments if you like this table, if you wanna see more epoxy projects. As always, thanks for watching. You guys are great. I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks again. Bye-bye.